Hey guys, it's Melissa from Faith, Hope, Love, where we grow together in our faith, increase in hope, and learn how to better love God and love other people. We are in our What's Your Type Enneagram series, and today I am joined by Grace from Ennea Nerds, and we're just gonna jump on in. So Grace, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and answering our obvious question, what's your type? Yeah, hi everybody, my name is Grace Cassidy, and I am a seven wing eight. And just a little bit about myself, I think kind of my childhood and my life kind of plays into exactly why I am a seven, um, because I I was raised in a military family, and so we moved around my whole life, my whole childhood. We lived all over the country. We lived overseas in Japan, and so I just got really used to that kind of need to be able to adapt quickly and love of change and being able to make friends really easily, and then I just kind of continued that into my adult life. Um, after I graduated college, I moved across the country from my family to work at Disneyland and to pursue acting because that was the fun thing that I was doing in my life at that time. Um, and then after that, so I lived there for a few years and then I wanted a bigger adventure. So I decided to move over to Asia all by myself and teach English. So I lived and worked in Hong Kong and Indonesia and traveled all over Asia all by myself just to, you know, have an adventure and to have cool stories and face fears and things like that. And then after that, I wanted a bigger adventure. My life just, I want more and more and more. Um, and so I decided to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, which is a trail that goes from Mexico to Canada, and it takes you like five to six months to hike. So I just decided to go do that because that sounded fun. And then after that was when I kind of decided I needed to settle down a little bit. Um, so my sister and her family was living in Texas, and I wanted to be in my niece and nephew's life. And so I moved there and got a job at a church as their media, digital media person. And that's where I met my husband because his family um, attends that church. And so that's where I met him. And we moved super, super fast and got married real quick. And then after that, we wanted more change. So now where I'm currently sitting is I live in Idaho and I have randomly become a school teacher in a public school that just kind of fell into my lap. But that's a whole different kind of adventure. Um, so yes, I think I think my my need for change and adventure is definitely plays into my my type as a seven. I love it. I seriously just want to like live vicariously through you. I mean, you're you're like emanating joy and fun to me right now. And I just, I my my brother actually is a seven eight, and he was always like just doing so much. He um, his most recent thing is he's well, this is his planned career forever now. But he is a helicopter pilot and like part of the year he lives in Alaska and he's, he's just like doing incredible fun things. And I would never choose that career for myself, but like he is just loving life right now. Um, so it's just, it's so cool to see sevens like living in, in health, you know, and like really doing what they feel called to do and created to do. Um, it's really exciting. So I love it. Obviously you've got your, um, your Instagram and your podcast. Um, I had your partner in crime on a couple of weeks ago and, uh, she's just incredible. Um, but any of nerds it's, um, I love your content you guys put out. It's always so educational, but also hilarious. And uh, I always feel super called out as a type three <laughs> watching those videos. Um, but I love it so much. Um, with that, so, you know, obviously you have this podcast and Instagram. How long have you been studying the Enneagram and how long have you known that you were a seven? Is that where you mistyped? What was your process with that? So I kind of fell into the Enneagram the same time as the rest of the world really kind of it exploded. So it actually hasn't been that long. I mean, I think that was like in 2017, 2018, something like that. Um, but a friend of mine at the time and my sister were were kind of getting into it. So they told me about it and I've always loved personality tests. I've just been obsessed with them my whole life, but I've never found one that I thought actually fit. And so I've always felt like, am I broken? Like, why aren't these fitting with me until I tried the Enneagram and I, I took a quiz like everybody does, which now that I know more about it, I know that's not the best way to find your type, but I took a quiz and it gave me my top three and seven was my highest percentage. So I just started looking into seven and it immediately, 
I mean, I think everyone who really starts to get into the Enneagram and find your type, it kind of, you feel naked and exposed when you start reading about it. And it feels like someone has been like reading your journal or, you know, has a window into your heart. It's so exposing. And I immediately felt that about seven, like it was just spot on. So I actually, I didn't mistype. So that test actually did get it accurate. Um, But then of course I just delved so deep into it and learning about the wings and the triads and how complex it is and how you're connected to so many different numbers. It just, it just all fits. And so then, um, that's about when I when I met my friend Bethany, um, and she was just as into it as I was. So we would just talk about it for hours and hours on end. Um, but yeah, I just, I, it's so, it's so amazing. I love it. I could talk about it forever. I totally agree. I'm, I'm a self-acclaimed nerd also. I think that's something like with, I feel like if I find something that I'm into, I just go like all in and the Enneagram has been interesting. Like you kind of said, personality types. I, I studied psych in college and I just, I love it. But I, same thing. I didn't really feel like it really, I didn't really feel understood. Um, I mistyped thinking I was a type two and I felt comfortable with that because it felt really nice. Um, but then I read about the three and I just like, I felt like someone was reading my mail and it was so irritating, but I'm like, oh, this is actually who I am. And so obviously I think it really helps in understanding ourselves and our people better um, to be able to love, uh, receive God's love for one, um, and then be able to love others well. I feel like it's just helped me understand like the depth of my flaws um, and also like the great potential that I have too. So um, yeah, I would kind of love to kind of look more deeply at the type seven. How have you seen in your own personal life, your strengths, your weaknesses, those lines of stress and growth, how have you seen that come out in your life, both pre and like now being in COVID? How have you seen that in your life? So pre-COVID, I was a very kind of stereotypical seven. I'm joyful, happy-go-lucky, chasing the fun, looking for good stories, you know, friends with everybody, life of the party, all those kind of things. And then COVID happened. And actually, the the pandemic itself didn't necessarily affect me too much. I was working at a church at the time, and especially in Texas, we didn't really shut down that much. Um, and so my job just kept trugging along, but me being the digital person, my job kind of like doubled because everything at my job had to go digital. So my job became really stressful. And then as I was saying, I met my husband and we kind of had this really quick whirlwind romance. So we were married within nine months of dating. Um, and that all happened in 2020. And so, my life changed so drastically in that year, 2020. Um, and half of it was so incredibly joyful and wonderful because I was falling in love, you know, getting engaged, then getting married, planning my wedding. And so that was so happy. But on the flip side, other parts of my life just kind of felt like it was falling apart. Um, my job was getting super stressful and, Uh, just some different relationships kind of started falling apart. And I I was just living in this like weird balance of pain and hope and happiness at the same time. But again, that really had really nothing to do with COVID. But um, my family, depression really deeply runs in my family. And lots and lots of my, my family has had it and had to be medicated and things like that. Um, but I always thought that like, I wasn't going to, I had somehow it had skipped my, my generation or something like that, but unfortunately I don't think it had. And so I really started to go into a pretty severe deep depression at the end of 2020. And I didn't know that it was happening at the time. And I didn't, I had never experienced these kind of feelings and I didn't know what to do. And I didn't know why I was feeling this, but I was also a newlywed and so happy at the same time. And thankfully, um, my mom was very, very aware of what depression looks like because her mother suffered from it horribly. And so she was just absolutely wonderful and really helped me to recognize and admit what was happening. And so I have been actually kind of on a journey living in my stress number for the last year and a half or so. And I think I'm finally kind of seeing the light 
and starting to feel like myself again. Um, but since the end of 2020, all through 2021, I was just fully living in my stress number and seven stress number is one. And so it was a whole lot of, um, perfectionism in a super unhealthy way and a lot of self-criticalness and anger and things like that. And I, being familiar with the Enneagram, I recognized that I wasn't myself and that I was showing these different negative attributes of one, but I didn't know how to get out of it. I'm kind of like a seven who has gone through a really kind of unhealthy bit of my life. And now I'm working towards getting back into healthy seven shape, I guess. I appreciate your honesty because I think so many people avoid talking about mental health. Um, I've shared in some of my episodes past depression and med- mental health is a big part of not just my history, but my family as well. And I totally resonate. And I think that's a thing with threes and sevens is that we kind of avoid our hurt and avoid our pain until it just like it, we can't avoid it any longer. And so I appreciate you being willing to say that medication has helped you. That's part, again, part of my, that's part of my healing. Um, and I really believe that um, there's obviously every single number deals with mental health to some extent or another, but I feel like the types like us that avoid pain and avoid emotion, um, it sometimes it just comes as like this huge shock. And I understand like obviously with being married and having lots of like positive things too, like sometimes it's easy to, be like, well, why am I feeling sad? Like, there's no reason for me to feel that way. Um, but it's just, it's just a part of life, you know, like we experience shifts in mood and especially like the last couple of years have been really, really hard and it's okay to acknowledge that. Um, so I'm, I'm proud of you. I appreciate you sharing that. Um, that means a lot. And I think being able to see like how that stress has come out. Um, I'm hoping, I'm sure someone's watching that has gone through that recently. And again, as a seven, it's very painful to admit pain. Um, so I appreciate you doing that. Um, how, like, obviously with going through that, what are some ways that you feel like you've been able to address, address that hurt? Kind of going back to what I was saying about how I grew up, we moved so much and I've, I haven't been able to have like super, super deep friendships because I moved so much, like every two to three years of my entire life, we have moved. So I've always had people around me, but never like super, super deep relationships. And so it's a struggle for me to let my walls down with people because in the back of my mind, I'm always like, well, I'm going to move in a year or they're going to move in a year or something like that. And so I, I have learned, even though this is not healthy, I have learned to just deal with things myself and I'll just go into like this thought spiral and figure things out myself. And I mean, in some ways that's good, but in a lot of ways it's unhealthy. And so through this, and this is what I kind of started doing at the end of 2021 is I just forced myself to confide in people. So of course my husband has been aware of all this the whole time. Um, but I forced myself to talk to my mom more deeply about this and my sister and my best friend. Um, and so rather than trying to hold it in and heal myself and figure it all out myself, I've been letting other people help me. Um, which is a very vulnerable place to go because I want to have it all together myself and I want to be that fun life of the party for everyone, but you just can't always do that. Um, And then the biggest thing that has helped me to get through these kind of things is my faith for sure. Um, I was raised in a Christian home, which is such a blessing um, because I've always had strong Christians around me, which is wonderful. But I think the only caveat or the only struggle with that is if you've always, always had your faith, you don't know what it's like to not have it, um, if that makes sense. And so this whole past year, in the back of my mind, I've always known, like, the Lord's got me. He's going to love me through all of this. But I wasn't actively pursuing that relationship with him as I needed to and as he desires us to do. And so that's really been a major switch is I looked back on 2021 and I realized that I had not been really pursuing my relationship with the Lord. And so I have been pursuing that so hard um, since December of this this year. And already, I mean, 
the Lord doesn't need any time to like show up in your life. And he has been showing up in so many ways and he's opened so many doors and just spoken through people around me. And so that's been kind of like how I've been able to start the healing process, if that makes sense. Totally. I want to kind of touch on something you just shared about, you know, inviting people into that process. You know, I think that, um, I, I had an interview, I, I was able to chat with Suzanne Stabile, and one of the things she said to type sevens is, let your people know that if you're trying to move forward in wholeness, you're gonna need to not be the fun friend, you know? Like you need to be allowed to be contemplative, like moving to that five, you know, like allowing yourself to, um, to, to be able to sit in those difficult emotions with them. And for some people, they won't like that. But for those select close few, like your husband and your best friend and your mom that like will love you unconditionally, you know, that's so powerful for the seven to be able to let that fun wall down um, and being able to be real. I mean, that's so cool to hear it just from you that that's like been helpful for you. That's really encouraging. That's really encouraging. Um, I kind of want to talk to you about, you know, obviously the show is Faith, Hope and Love. How has like understanding yourself as a seven helped you to grow in those three? One of my major aha moments with the Enneagram and the, my early journey with the Enneagram was I've always known that I'm a joyful person and that I typically can spin things to see the positive side and look for the silver lining. And I've never been much of a worrier, like just everything's going to work out, you know, that kind of a mindset. And not many people around me were really like that. Like, I didn't know why I didn't worry as much as the people around me, or maybe I should worry more. I don't really know. And so when I started to learn about the Enneagram and how sevens, you know, our, our joy is actually a reflection of the Lord and it's an attribute of the Lord. And so, you know, you wouldn't think anyone would complain about being joyful, but it kind of gave validity to to my joy that I had been experiencing my whole life. And so that has been a huge, a huge part of my journey with Enneagram and with my faith is just owning that joy and knowing, um, that that joy comes from the Lord. Um, and then also being able to use that joy with the people around me. And like, it's, it's a blessing if I can come into the room and make people smile and make their day, you know, there's, there's, um, there's an importance to that. You know, I might not be the wisest or the smartest or the, you know, have all the ideas together or the most prepared, but I can bring some happiness into someone's day. And that's, that's a significant thing. The thing that's really cool, like about all the Enneagram numbers, when you put them together, like it does exemplify a lot of the characters of God. Obviously we are, I'm not saying that we are God, but we reflect that. And some of the sevens that I know you see them walk into a room and it's just like everything lifts a little, you know, um, I'm part of like a mom's group and like you have like, a, I have a friend of mine that she, every time she gets on stage, it's just like, it just, the mood in the room changes and it's just a really fun and powerful thing. Um, and especially with, you know, a lot of us are dealing with heavy things. It's a huge gift, like truly for sevens to be able to do that for people. Um, it's a huge gift. Um, obviously you're a teacher as well. Um, how do you see that coming out in your teaching? Well, I am a music teacher, and so I think that works beautifully as a seven. I don't know how I would do it as like a math teacher or something like that, but I'm able to use that energy that I've got and that fun, and we play tons of games, and I think any teacher would say the same thing is like, you, your kids don't want to be at school most of the time, and so you have to show your passion to the, to your students in order for them to get excited about it, which is so easy. Cause I love music and I've, I've loved teaching music and things like that. And so I do so many silly things and I'm able to really build relationships with my students through those, that silliness and the kind of like lack of inhibitions that I kind of have as a seven. I don't mind embarrassing myself. I don't mind having a good time. I want every class my goal, even though this is kind of selfish, but my goal is that my class will be their favorite of the day and that they'll go home and they'll tell their parents and they'll try and recreate these different games and activities and things like that. So that I just try and bring the happiness and the fun and the goofiness to my classroom. I just, I love that you're able to bring that to your classroom. That is so, so special. 
I guess like with being a seven, you know, obviously we talk about, you know, faith, hope, and love. How have you been able to receive the love of God as a seven? I think going uh, with one being our stress number and ones being so having that self-critic. And so when sevens are in their stress, we have a self-critic that's so strong. It's really hard to picture anyone loving us, especially like the God of the universe. Why would he love me? Especially because when sevens are in our stress number, we look so wildly different from our usual self. Um, in Ian Cron's book, uh, The Road Back to You, there's a part where he's talking about sevens. And I think he was saying that his son is a seven. And so he was talking about how sevens actually scare him the most because we have the highest highs and the lowest lows. And I think that's so accurate. We look, when we have finally given in to, like, we can't run from our feelings anymore and we are down and we are stressed, we look so vastly different and we know it like deep down we know like i'm not my usual self and no one's going to want to be around me anymore no one's going to want to be my friend or love me or anything like that so then talking about the love of god in the back of my mind i know he's always going to love me but i'm just so down on myself when i'm in the stress number that it's almost impossible to to even picture that. And so the, the two kind of ways that I can think that I really can understand the love of God or access it again is one, just getting in the word and praying and forcing myself to do that. Um, you almost don't want to do that because you feel like, you know, I'm not even worthy in some ways, but forcing yourself to do that and just praying and like letting it all out like he can take it. Um, he can take my anger. He can take my sadness and he can make beautiful things out of it. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is just having an amazing small community that I feel very comfortable with that I can share these things with. And then them being able to speak scripture into my life and speak wisdom and be praying for me and things like that. So those are kind of the ways that I've been finding lately is how I can feel the love of the Lord because I pushed it away so much. I honestly didn't anticipate crying during my seven interview. <laughs> if I'm completely honest, but like that was so beautiful. And I mean, I really think each number kind of feels that for some reason or another, I mean, for threes, it's like, I'm not worthy of God's love. You know, like I haven't done enough to earn it. But for that seven, that is just like, if I'm not happy, am I good enough to receive this? And like the answer unbelievably absolutely is yes. Like God's love is wholly unconditional. And that's the beauty of the gospel is that we don't have to do anything or be good enough or be happy enough or be fun enough or anything enough to earn that love. I mean, like you kind of said earlier, I've, I've never not known God. Like it's just, God has been a part of my life since day one. And there's been those seasons of life for me that, I have kind of semi walked away, but it's in those, in coming back, I'm like, gosh, I can't even imagine my life without this kind of love. And I want that for everybody because it's something that like living without that love, it's, it's really dark. It can be. And maybe it's not, for, maybe if you're watching this maybe and you're not a Christian, like I, every person's experience is different, but I know for mine and actually I'm kind of hearing with yours too, Grace, that like being able to experience that love, like that true, unbelievable, unconditional love is so, so powerful and so freeing. Um, and I do agree with you, sevens, you know, seeing that the highest highs and the lowest lows, threes can kind of be like that to, to an extent as well. Um, but I think I just, I so appreciate you sharing that. It's, um, I appreciate your vulnerability and honesty in that and being able to receive that love is so, so powerful. I kind of want to talk about maybe if you could say some final words to the seven as well as someone as well as to someone that maybe loves the seven. Well, I'm going to start with if you have a seven in your life, whether it's your partner or a friend or a sibling or whatever, um, please just check in on them um, because we are really, really good at hiding what we're feeling. But what we really need is someone to like make us talk and so if you start to suspect that maybe your seven is not 
not doing so well. We're probably doing a lot worse than you think because that means that the cracks are starting to show. And so that, and I think that's what I really needed during this because I think I did, I changed so much when I started going through this, this kind of depression journey. And a lot of people were like, oh, she's not fun anymore. So we're just going to kind of step back. And that's the exact opposite of what I really needed. But I did have those couple amazing people that didn't abandon me and didn't, um, didn't let me go any deeper into that. And they really linked arms with me and held me up. Um, so I would just say really, really keep checking in on your seven and four sevens. I would just encourage you to find that community somewhere, somehow it just a small community. We tend to be friends with a million people, which is great, but you can't be best friends with a million people and you can't confide in a million people. So you really, really need to find those, those ride or die people that are going to be there for you in those rough times. So for me, it's my husband and my mom and my best friend and my sister. And those are like the four people that always know what's going on inside my head. And I can call them up at 3 a.m. or whatever and cry on the phone. And so that, that they've like just been so incredible. And I appreciate they will have no idea how much they've helped me through all of this. So I would encourage sevens to find those people that you can let those walls down with and and just confide in them. I, gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I like seriously did not imagine I was going to cry during this. So I just, I appreciate um, your honesty and um, I really wholeheartedly agree with you. I think every single type needs authentic friendship, but I think sevens especially um, can sometimes keep people at arm's distance by being that fun, bubbly self and not being real. Um, I totally I echo all of that. If you're a seven watching this, I encourage you find those authentic friendships, be real with people and allow yourself to, um, to have those authentic conversations, even if they feel scary or uncomfortable. It's so, so important to not just receive God's unconditional love, but also receive that from people. We need that. We were built for it. So gosh, uh, Grace, I just so appreciate your time and just unpacking the seven. Um, I know I could talk about the seven, but I can't fully see through that lens. So I appreciate you taking the time and being so honest and vulnerable with us today. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for having me. Oh my goodness. And I'm sorry, I this might have been more of a downer than <laughs> than we wanted it to be. Um, but yeah, I appreciate. I feel like we just kind of had a therapy session a little bit. I love it. <laughs> I think maybe one thing too, I'm sure sevens are not at a loss for fun things to try, but like, is there any like maybe a fun thing you would suggest for a seven to do, or maybe like a fun thing for someone that loves a seven to do with their seven? Ooh, oh my goodness. I Well, for one, I would always just say, if your seven has a fun idea, like just go with it, just say yes, because it's going to be a good time. Um, I would say, I mean, just try something new with a seven. Like if you've never gone rock climbing, try rock climbing or, you know, take a leap of faith, go skydiving with a seven. You know, we just love trying new things. So find something in your city that you have never done before and grab a seven and go do it. It's going to be a blast, whatever you're going to do. I get, I feel like everything you've mentioned, like legitimately, my brother has done all of those things. So except for working at Disneyland, that's like not his style, but like, all the other things he has done. So <laughs> it's just kind of ironic. I love it. So um, how can we kind of go forward in following you? I know you have your Instagram. Um, how can we follow you going forward? Yes. Yeah, so I have a podcast with my friend Bethany. Um, it's called Any Nerds. And you can listen to that on any listening platform of your choice. We're everywhere. And then also we have our community on Instagram, also the name Any Nerds. And we just make lots of silly reels on there and do lives and things like that. So it's just, it's a fun, fun place to be. Yeah. As, as we're recording this, you guys just did a thing on movies, which like I totally resonated with the ones you shared, um, for the three. And I think it's just, it's just a fun way to look at the Enneagram, not just through, um, like the educational side of the Enneagram, but like just bringing like the fun to it. Um, and I think as a five and a seven, that's like a perfect pairing for teaching anything. So I just love that. I love that for you guys. So, um, thank you again for joining me today. Um, for those that are watching, we'll be back next week with Type 8.